Hey guys, in this video, we will be making our own Telegram chatbot with Python, which we can program to do basically whatever we want. We will be developing our own micro framework from scratch to help us do this. So let's get started. So first we need to grab the dependencies. So we need requests, LXML and beautiful soup for Python libraries. So you can type this command in your terminal and hit enter to run the installation. After that is done, we would want to create a new bot and register it with Telegram. And to do that, we have something called the bot father. So the bot father is a Telegram utility which helps us create and manage our own bots. So if you don't already have a Telegram account, head on over to web.telegram.org and register your mobile number with it. After you are logged in, head on over to the search menu and search for bot father with the blue tick beside it. Then click enter and click start. After that, you can type slash new bot to make a new bot, give it a name and a username. And once you're done with that, you'll be given a API token. So make sure you copy that and keep it. Now we can get ourselves familiarized with the Telegram API. So Telegram provides a beautiful online REST API, which we can use to send messages and receive messages and all sorts of things basically. So let's dive into that. So let's just open our browser and type api.telegram.org slash bot bot and then paste in the API token of your bot. In order for us to know what messages were sent to our bot, the Telegram API provides a get updates method, which when run on our bot token gives us the entire history of all the messages that were received by our bot. As we just made our bot, it makes sense for the JSON response, which we got to be completely empty. So let's go over to Telegram and find our bot. So I'm going to search for the bot which I just created. And then after I find it, I'm going to hit start. And then let's try sending it a message. So I'm going to type hello there. And let's see if our API, when we run the get updates method again, let's see what that returns. So as expected, our result JSON is populated now with the two entries with the messages which we just sent to our bot. And uh, each entry has a lot of information like the ID, the person who sent it, uh, the chat ID of the person who sent it, the date, and finally the text as well. In the second entry, we have the hello there message. And that again has a update ID, it has a chat ID, it has the name of the person who sent it, and also the text of what the message actually was. When I send another message and then update the get updates method, uh, we can see that all three messages which we sent to our bot are still there. Uh, and that might be a problem because every time we hit the get updates method, it will give us a list of the, all the messages which our bot received from the very birth of it. And that might not be very efficient. So Telegram has this inbuilt parameter inside the get updates method and that's called the offset. And the offset, if we supply a update ID, as in we have just here, if we supply the update ID as the offset and hit enter, we would only get the messages from that update ID onwards. So that's one way to quickly filter out messages. Now let's try incrementing the update ID by one and let's see what that gives us. So as expected, the result is empty because there is no such message with that update ID. So let's try sending a message now. And then when we refresh, we can see that the message which we just sent is available in our response JSON. But there is a small flaw with this approach as well, because we would want to constantly keep checking for messages which our bot has received. And that would mean that we hit the API endpoint over and over and over again, thousands of times in a small amount of time. But luckily for us, Telegram provides yet another parameter for us to specify called the timeout parameter. So when I specify the value of that parameter to be a hundred and I also update the offset or I increment the offset by one and I hit enter, the connection would be open until I get a message with that update ID or if the timeout exceeds a hundred seconds. So as we can see that the connection is still open. So let's go over to telegram now and then type a quick message. And then as soon as a message is received, the connection closes and it returns the JSON of the message which we just got. 
This method is called long polling and it greatly reduces the number of times we hit the Telegram API. And the next API method which we will discuss is called the send message method. It's a very simple method which allows the bot to send a specified message to a specified person. This method takes two parameters. One, the text parameter, which is the message to be sent. And also the second parameter being the chat ID of the person who you want to send the message to. Here I'm going to send that message replying to myself. And when I do that, it gives me a JSON response of the message which we just sent. And when we go over to Telegram, we can see that my bro bot has replied. So now that we have familiarized ourselves with the Telegram API, we can write wrapper functions for the methods which we just saw in Python and make a micro framework. So I made a new folder and in this I'm going to make a new file and I'm going to paste the token of our bot inside in this fashion and name it as config.cfg. The reason we're doing this is because it's really, really unsafe to hard code sensitive data like the token inside the code. Next, I'm going to make a new file and call it bot.py. And in that I'm going to import the required libraries first and then I'm going to make a new class called the telegram chatbot. In that we'll first define a constructor function which takes in a config as a parameter. This parameter will contain the path of the config file which we just created. After that we'll initialize an attribute called the token which reads the token from the config file which we just defined by using this function. After that, we initialize a base URL, which contains the base URL of the Telegram API. We now define a function for the get updates API method. In that, we'll pass the offset and, and we set the URL variable as the base URL plus the get updates method. And we also set the timeout. If the offset is specified, we also append that to our URL as a parameter. We then use the get method from the request library to load that URL and return the JSON response back to us. In a similar fashion, we will also define the send message function which takes in the message to be sent and the chat ID of the person who it has to be sent to as parameters. We now make a new URL with the base URL and the send message API method along with the chat ID and the text of the message. Only if that message is not empty, we will use the request library to ping the Telegram API with that URL. Last, we will define the read token from config file function, which is used to read the token from the config file. For that, we will import config parser and use it to read our config file. We will then return the token, which is stored under the section creds as the name token. With that, our bot framework is now complete and now we can define a server which will use this framework to activate the Telegram chatbot. We first import the framework which we just made and then initialize the update ID to be none. Then in a continuous loop, we call our get updates function specifying the offset as the update ID. After that, we will move into the results section of our JSON. If the results section contains some data, then for every element inside that section, we will do the following. We will first fetch the update ID and set it to the variable. Then in a try catch block, we will try to fetch the message content from the JSON. We will also fetch the ID of the person who sent the message to the bot. Now it's time for our bot to make a reply given the message which it got and send that reply to the person who sent it. To test our bot out, we can make a very simple make, make reply function which just sends the reply OK. Now I'm going to run the server.py code and when I type a message to my bot, it replies OK. Our framework is now ready. So what should we make our chatbot actually do? Well, we should make it speak gangster, of course. So I found this really cool website called thezoogle.net which translates anything you say back into gangster. So let me demo it to you. If I type, hey, what's up? It translates that to, yo dog, what's good? I also found this GitHub repository which converts whatever text you type into gangster by using this thezoogle.net.
shout out to Chafla for making this. So in this GitHub repository, we just need to go over to jizugle.py file. Inside that, we need to copy these first few lines and paste it in a new file called jizugle.py. We'll also remove some unnecessary lines which aren't really useful here. So now inside our server.py we can import jizugle and we will also make a small change to the make reply function such that we pass in the text to our jizugle function. Now we can run server.py and see how our chatbot performs. So when we give in some text to our chatbot it converts that to gangster successfully. It's now time to deploy our chatbot onto the cloud. The cloud which we are going to choose is called pythonanyway.com and with this we can ensure that our chatbot is up and running 24-7. It's pretty easy to do so, just head on over to pythonanyway.com and create a beginner account for free and then go over to your dashboard, you can see that you can create a new console. So when we create a new console, we can call python like normal and it already has all the libraries which we would need pre-installed. To upload our chatbot onto Python Anywhere, click on Browse Files and then let's make a new directory called Telegram Chatbot. After that, inside the directory, we will upload all our four files which we'd made. So there's config.py, bot.py, jizugle.py and server.py. After that, we can make a new bash console and cd inside the Telegram Chatbot directory and from there we can call python server.py. This will make sure that the server is up and running and will still be running even if you close out of this website. So let's move over to Telegram again to test out a bot real quick and yes, it still works. So that's been it for this video guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, please subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.